Hello and welcome to this India Today special. The judgment of the Supreme Court, a unanimous verdict in the Article 370 case, has set off a fierce legal and constitutional debate. There are those who are saying that the judgment is inimical to the federal principles of our constitution. Others are saying it's given a huge boost to national integration. How is this judgment to be viewed? Who better to answer that than the eminence grease of Indian jurisprudence and constitutional law? Fali Nariman joins me. Appreciate your joining me, Mr. Nariman. I want to start with uh, this fierce debate over whether this judgment undermines federal principles or does it strengthen national integration? What's your view? Well, before I come to that, Rajdeep, permit me just to say this. Yes that before the judgment came and before perhaps it was argued because I didn't follow the argument too much, my own view was that the presidential power under 370 clause 3 could not be exercised at all in the manner in which it was done. And for this reason, that as you know, there is an article, supervening article in the Constitution, which says amendment of the Constitution. And it expressly states that each and every provision of the Constitution can be amended. Therefore, we have to judge the validity of what happened in August of 19, 2019. 2019 by reference to that event. In Article 368, as you say, as I said, says each and every provision can be amended. It includes a temporary provision, it includes a permanent provision. And the manner in which it has to be done is that it has to go before two houses of parliament, get the requisite majority, and thereafter get the presidential assent. There is no other manner. But, and there's a big but, in 370 there is a subclause 4, which expressly states that the president is empowered also to revoke the the, the, the special, the status of a temporary in inclusion in the Constitution. That, but it is conditioned. It says he can only do this, and you must see the proviso. Yes. You can only do this, that the, rec the recommendation of the Constituent Assembly of the State of JNK must be, is necessary before the President issues such a notification. Now, admittedly, there could not be such a notification for the simple reason that there was no constituent assembly in existence. Yes. And secondly, that this constitu the constitution of JNK itself had been abrogated. So this was otios. But, but you cannot say that a proviso is otios, for God's sake. Otios meaning uh, is infractious, infractious effect. ineffective. Yeah, etc. because because you see, the Supreme Court judgment yes. uh, does go on to say that the presidential order renaming the Jammu and Kashmir Constituent Assembly as the Legislative Assembly to get uh, around uh, 374 correct. is not correct. correct. But then goes on to say that the decision itself I'm, I'm to abrogate that's a little jump is valid. so so they've done a legal that's slate a, of hand that's a little jump yes quite right it's a legal slate of hand which is, you are quite right i i i, I disagree with that that's mm -hmm. apart from that but they, they, therefore 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 what is the consequence i mean yes. so, suppose i am right suppose i am right can can article 370 not be removed it can but it has to be done in the procedure mentioned in 368. 
That's my point. So you're very clear yeah. that Article 370 is a temporary provision. Yes, yes. So this belief that it was, you know, there's a permanence to it, you disagree yes, with that's that. Right. It says so. But if you have to remove it, there is a process to be followed. That's right. In your view, there is a question mark over whether the process that was followed by renaming the Constituent Assembly as Legislative Assembly is the right process. That's right. So in your view, what would have been the right process? Only go under 368. That is to say, amendment. Uh, amendment. Which they haven't done. There's no amendment of the constitution to get rid of 368. They've gone to my presidential power and presidential power only under 370. Once again, 370 clause 3. And a constitutional amendment would have necessarily required a two thirds majority. Yes, but that's, you in see, both that's the politics of it. Yes. Whether they, they would have got the two thirds, they would not have got it is, a, to my mind, of not of any significance at all. I mean, we are dealing with a constitutional question, so please let us decide it in accordance with the provisions of the constitution. Okay. Whether it was urged, not urged, half urged, not urged, it makes no difference. You make an important point because that's the that's the constitutional process that should have been adopted, yes. which has in a way been short circuited, it's mandated. which is mandated, which has been short circuited. There's an interesting editorial in the Hindu newspaper which refers to the judgment and says. The most potent attack on federal principles is the court's unconscionable conclusion that parliament, while a state is under president's rule, can do any act, legislative or otherwise, on behalf of state legislature. Yes, yes, that, that's correct. They are also right. I'm not saying they are not right. No, is that a concern? Because let me give you... Yes, that is a concern. That is a concern. That is a concern. If you, if you call India federal... Of course, we are not federal, we are quasi-federal. Yes. And that's, that's the constitutional position also. We are quasi-federal. But all this can be done. Whatever is required to be done has to be done in accordance with con the constitution. It can't be done apart from the constitution. That is to say, it has to be done by an amendment. Now, that amendment, whether it was possible, not possible, let us assume that it was possible, they haven't done it. If it wasn't possible, well, that's worse for them. But that's, that's not the point. I'm not raising any technical issue. Mm -hmm. It's a constitutional issue. And the constitutional bench of the constitution of the court had to, de had to determine this on its own. It had to determine it, having overlooked this. It was not proper at all. But it's a, a point was taken or not taken. It's a unanimous verdict. Yeah. And uh, the court was being asked to look at both the effective abrogation of Article 370 as well as the downsizing of a state into union territory. Now, that's another point. Yes. The downsizing of the state, once again, is very, very doubtful for two reasons. One is the bench relied upon a five judge bench judgment of 1960 years and years ago which i i con consider to be incorrect namely that you have to take the consent of the state legislature namely that you have to at least approach the state legislature and having approached it the court the, the court in 1960 said having approached it that's enough you don't have to take its consent Right. But I think that, again, is a very serious violation of a federal principle. Because what's the use of saying that we are a federal state and which doesn't require a consent to its downsizing from a state to a union territory? Because we saw it with Andhra Pradesh when the state was broken apart into Andhra and Telangana. There was a lot of, uh, uh, there was a backlash to that. Now, where the, a state under president's rule gets divided into two union territories. Does that set in your view a dangerous principle or, or as is being argued and was argued before the court, this strengthens national integration. Jammu and Kashmir was an example to use the court's own words of asymmetrical federalism. And therefore it was necessary to integrate it by removing the temporary pro provision of article 370. Yes, there's a point there. I agree. There's, there's some point there. But that makes no difference to my mind. Was it constitutional? Is my, because we are looking at it. I'm looking at it as a lawyer. 
You are you're worried about the process for <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Because that was not, it, that, that whether it could have been done or not been done is a matter again of consequence. Because if such an amendment to the constitution had been done, it could have been suggested that it alters the basic structure of the constitution, which again is not permissible. I.e. federalism. Which the chief justice himself has called the northern star. Yes. You see, so... I mean, that's a di way, vastly different question from what was decided. Yes. At, uh, the court could argue, you know, I, presumably the court felt that the basic structure of the constitution was not being was violated. Was not being. But that is only sub silento. Sub silento. They don't say so. They don't say so. They don't yes. say so. That's clear. That's yes. quite clear. But their attention perhaps was not drawn to it, whatever it was. But that, that to my mind. But the basic problem is a one, one which deals with, with, whether it must be done, if it requires to be done, if at all, it should have been done in accordance with the constitution. Let me play the devil's advocate. Right. Exceptional circumstances require exceptional... Well, what is uh, the exceptional, uh, exceptional circumstances? The exceptional circumstances, Jammu and Kashmir had a special status of a kind under Article 370 that no. other parts of the country didn't. Therefore... Look, I, I tell you. Yes. Uh, you, you, you may have been right. If, if... They had gone through this process. It had been defeated in parliament because of majority, whatever it was. And thereafter, the court, they said that these are extraordinary circumstances and therefore we exercise this power. That was po perhaps possible, mm -hmm. but not, not if you don't pursue that course. So net, net, are you telling me that this needs, uh, what it, there are those who are saying article 370 is now dead. That issue is now over. Do you believe Article 370, which is still on the uh, statute books, is effectively a dead law as a result of this five-judge unanimous uh, uh, Yes, of course it is. Of course it is. But, but that makes no difference. You see, whether it is again republished as 370 or not makes no difference. You see, you have to go by the judgment. Because the court, the court is empowered to say that it is dead. Is it reversible? Beg your pardon? Is it reversible? If a subsequent parliament was to come in the future and look at it differently, is it reversible? Or do you believe that it is irreversible? I don't know. I haven't checked that. I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, some of the important elements uh, in this were to suggest that uh, views of the state legislature under Article 3 you said this are view, recommendatory only, yes, are only recommendatory. Yes, that's because of the judgment which I told you of 1960. Yes. The, the, the Chief Justice has followed that judgment. Jammu and Kashmir doesn't retain any element of sovereignty. You see, for the longest time... No, no, time, sovereignty, sovereignty is absolutely correct. The judge, yes. court is absolutely court correct is on right, that. Right, right. Only that uh, second judge, mm -hmm. Justice Call, yes. uh, has followed, I believe it is Justice Gandhagatka's judgment which says that he did retain the residue of sovereignty after seceding those three points, the Maharaja. You know, the other interesting observation, but parliament, that, that, is, that is a minor okay, question. My, parliament's power yeah. under Article 356.1 is not limited to lawmaking. You know, it's a much wider power that parliament has. That's a very has. dangerous thing. That's a, that is far more dangerous to my mind. Because if, if you can impose us. An emergency under 356 in a state because it's not functioning properly and then do exactly what you like and treat it as a unitary government, then I'm afraid you are going against the ethos of the constitution. So, you know, in a sense, are we saying that we are becoming more... Sen the One of the effects of the judgment is to suggest that we are becoming more centralizing. That's it, correct. Uh, a, 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 as a as a nation, I, I think you have correctly put it. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. Yes, uh, that may be a point of view. I'm mm. not suggesting that it's not a point of view, but that but that 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 is a consequence. You know, it's very interesting. A 2016 Supreme Court order had held that the provision had over the years acquired a certain permanent space in the Constitution and could not be abrogated, uh, and therefore, you know, this has been a. a there are Kashmiris today who are trying to suggest that this was there was a sense of permanence. You are very clear. The temporary nature of it is yes, yes, the yes. court. A court has ruled rightly. Yes, on that. yes, yes. And even sovereignty, I don't think the, the justice call is absolutely correct. It, that judgment should has been should have been overlooked. As a matter of fact, which other four judges have really overlooked. If, if, uh, you see, when he said 
that the, some elements of sovereignty remained in the Maharaja. There was, that was a binding judgment of five judges. You know, but, but, but uh, may, may I also say, sub that sure, was overlooked. you know, turning to where you are, your original argument and your concern about the short circuiting of constitutional processes, the Supreme Court itself has said in the judgment, importantly, constitution amendments through a circuitous manner are not permissible. Article 368 procedure must be followed. So at one level, they say that the process should have been followed. And yet the consequence of that yeah. is that they have accepted the abrogation. The only, only exception. What else could the court yeah, but have the, done? the only exception is Article 3. Sure. See, which Article 3, but, but you have to read down Article 3. Article 3 doesn't expressly permit a state to be reduced to a union territory. It right. doesn't say so. And I would have expected a state in the original constitution of 1950 to be suddenly reduced from a status of a state to a third class status of a union territory would be a little. So you think that difficult. the court, you know, the court, even while perhaps ruling on the abrogation itself, could have also pronounced on the issue of statehood being downsized to a union territory. Perhaps, yes, and dealt with the federal principle which you mentioned. Yeah, because it didn't deal with the federal principle. Yeah, it stayed silent on it, and yeah. some are calling it, dare I say, a cop out. Yeah. That the state, uh, you know, is there no, a, that, you know, there is a. Because all these phrases don't. don't okay, now let me not it. use the word cop out. Yeah. The yeah. worry is yeah. that the court doesn't, beyond the point today, on these contentious political issues, want to confront the executive. And I therefore, know. separation of powers, this is the realm of parliament. This is, we do not want to confront the parliament or the uh, executive beyond a point. I don't think so. I don't think that's a correct assumption. Assume, no, I don't think so. <laughs> you see, I think that they have gone by the wrong approach to the whole situation that came in, the entirely different approach. Uh, they, 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 I, I, I don't see this point being, having been argued at all. Namely, the point which I mentioned earlier, namely that the principle that any provision of the Constitution can be amended mm -hmm. under 368. 370 is a provision of the Constitution. Whether temporary, call it temporary, call it permanent, makes no difference. They could always amend it. And therefore, it's not been amended in the right manner. That's all. Okay. So, five, in conclusion, road ahead. What is Fali Nariman saying as a result of this judgment, which is being hailed politically, may I add, particularly by the ruling party, because they see it as a vindication of the stand that they took on Article 370. How, what is the message that you have, if any, for uh, the judicial, uh, for our judiciary, for our higher judiciary? No, I have no message. I have only my own view on the matter because I would be presumptuous for me to give a message to the judiciary. But, but, but you're sending in, in this, you know, in, yeah. in, in what you've told me today, yeah. somewhere you're expressing your concern. Absolutely. My concern is, I, my, I do have a concern that it's, it's in, in my view, humble view, an incorrect incorrect appreciation of the constitution which which uh, which i didn't expect the court to do i thought the court would go through it and find out and tell them that this is the way to do it they could have said well it's impossible to do it for x y and z reason after which they could have perhaps taken another step but they didn't do that Fari Nariman, as always for your plain speaking and for in a way sending out in your own words a uh, a note of caution uh, to the courts to ensure that the constitutional processes are not subverted. Uh, I appreciate you uh, spelling it out so clearly. Thanks a lot. Good. Thank you. The one and only Fali Nariman. Thanks for watching.